Hello. Look at the floor. That's that's plastic stuff for uh, window people. Today's guest, one of Wales's finest, one of Britain's finest, one of the world's. He's got a quality about him as an actor, a sense of danger uh, that I love. But he's quite a pussycat in person. Please savour and enjoy Rhys Ivan. Are you, love? How are you? I'm very well. You look like you're in a photo booth about to have a passport photo taken. Well, I, on a, well, I feel like I'm the first Welshman going to Mars with all the tech <laughs> I'm attached to. And you've had to have someone come in and help you do it, haven't you? It's so embarrassing. <laughs> I can honestly say I think you're the only person who's had to have someone come in. That, had to, that needed help. Yeah. <laughs> well, beca it's because I don't own a laptop. I, I, I only have um, an iPad. Right, you you exist without a laptop. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, the, the only whenever I go on a laptop, the mouse is there initially, and then I I move my finger, and it and it go it, it's gone for months. Let's go right back to the beginning uh, for you, because I have a specific thing I want to ask you. We're both Welsh, but from different ends of the country. Now, so where are you from specifically? I'm from a town called Riffin between Rill and Wrexham. I have played the Sun Centre in Rill oh, several, several times. It's a venue where I once nearly insulted a blind man who was sitting in the front row with his eyes shut. And I, was, and I kept seeing him with his eyes shut and I thought, how rude. And I, and I was about to make a joke at his expense. And I opened my mouth and his friend who was with him must have known what I was gonna do and made some very delicate hand gestures as if to say, no, no, he can't see. <laughs> So I went. <laughs> oh, you wouldn't want to insult someone in Rill, I tell you. Oh well, and this is a blind person in Rill. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you, no. you 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 can't recover from that. <laughs> when you were growing up there in North Wales, there's a big difference, isn't there, between North Wales and and South Wales? And as a young boy, you 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 were into acting from a young age, yes. Yeah, yeah, I, from a, a, a teenager. Yeah. Right, okay. Now, as a teenager, I grew up in Port Talbot, then Porth Call, and we, the, the, the shadow of Richard Burton and Anthony Hopkins loomed so large. If that was what you wanted to do, the inspiration that they served up. Did you feel that? Did that shadow stretch to North Wales, or did you feel they were from somewhere else? No, you definitely felt that they were Welsh. Um, I mean, not to the degree you did with Anthony Hopkins, absolutely, because you know Anthony Hopkins was was in bloom when and still is, but was in bloom when <laughs> I was growing up. You say still is, blubbing it. He's just been Oscar nominated I now, know, and he's what I he's know. eighty three. I mean, yeah, yeah. could anything make you prouder? I mean, God. Yeah, I mean, it, it's just it's just beautiful. It is. Know, that's and, a great and, word. Uh, that's a great word for it. It is beautiful. You're absolutely right. He, I didn't know this till I did a little bit of research. That you, and, and I hope I'm right. Your first screen film role was directed by him. It was a film called August. Um, I don't think he directed before. Certainly not a movie. And it was based on. Um, Uncle Vanya, yeah. um, the play, and he played a version of Uncle Vanya in the film, and he also directed it. And yeah, and he just finished um, doing um, Silence of the Lambs. Really? So he really was in full bloom, you know. Um, <sighs> insects and butterflies and bees of all description were hovering around his uh, his his petals of greatness and um and he was wonderful 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 he was everything you wanted you know for a young actor and i was very very young and all my role was um th th it was set in wales so they they you know transposed the whole story to to a north wales setting and the, there's a terrible accident in the quarry in act three and then this young quarryman you know bleeding has to cycle down the mountain and say to you know, Anthony Hopkins, there's been an accident at the quarry. And that was my, that was my moment. He, I, you got the sense from him that he knew what it meant for us to be in a movie with him, you know, not in any grand or, or, or arrogant way, but he, he, 
he could access those moments himself, you know. Um, and you got a real sense of that, of the care and, um, and the sense that we were pressing the record button every time we, the imaginary <laughs> record button every time we engaged with him, you know. Oh, how lovely. How lovely. What a lovely way of putting it. Yeah, you, you're relishing every moment with him. Yeah, he was These well, were and things. things like, you know, he, he'd, he'd, pass the, he'd pass the catering bus. You know, we'd all be sitting on the catering bus and he'd knock on the window and he'd go... Ah. <laughs> stuff, I, all these things, you know, that you just, you know, you couldn't text or phone anyone then, but there were things like, you, wanted, you know, you wanted to phone your dad and go, Dad! Anthony Hopkins just did the Silence of the Lambs things on the window while I was having my chips, you know. You, you, to train as an actor, you went to Guildhall in London. Yeah. Now, which drama schools did you audition for altogether? Who offered you a place and who did? Rada. Did Rada turn you down? I think they did, yeah. Hang on a minute. You don't think, you know whether Rada turned you down. No, no, no. I'll tell you down. why, though. Because when I went, because I got into Guildhall and out of all the colleges I'd been to, I loved it so much because I'd never been to a building so modern. In my, it was it was proper space age, the Barbican Centre. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it was there. I know. was hoping you were going to say that Rada rejected you because they rejected me. Oh, did and, they? Yes, they did. Thank you for the show. No, they did. I, yeah, they must have rejected me. When you went in for your audition, when I went in for my audition, I found it very intimidating at Rada. There were there were young actors who looked like a young Rufus Sewell with long coats holding the text who seemed a lot older than me. How was the experience for you? Similar. Um, I, I really did feel like, um, like I was from another country, you know? Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. And I remember actually in one, of, this is so funny, in, in one of the recalls, I think, I remember Rufus was there auditioning. I don't, I don't know where Rufus went in the end, um, but there was a piano in the room. And obviously a lot of these English kids knew each other because I think they must have gone to National Youth Theatre or, yeah. or this. So, th so there was all a bit of, there was a lot of high-fiving, not high-fiving then, but, you know, uh, you know, all running across from each other and being, and be, and being um, physical and affectionate, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in, a, in a way that wasn't really up my alley. <laughs> Um, and there was a there was a piano in the room, and, and Rufus started playing tunes on it. And then some girls, some beautiful girls, gathered. And and I remember sitting in the corner. I remember sitting in the corner of the room, and I had these tra these blue trainers on that I'd bought in Rill. And I was sitting against the wall, and I and I was watching him entertaining these girls, being brilliant, you know, like something from Fame. And I suddenly got a whiff of my feet. <laughs> I just suddenly remember sitting there going, Jesus Christ, my feet fucking stink. <laughs> and then I've got to go, I've got to go in now. I've got to go in and do a speech from Amadeus in a minute. And I smell, I smell like a hobo, you know. And then I got, I got really paranoid about the smell of my feet. Anyway, so I, I got in in the end. And I, and I did, you know, I had a fantastic time in drama school. I absolutely loved it. You know, for me, it, it was like meeting people from different backgrounds, different countries, different cultures. Because up until then, I hadn't really left Wales, you know? Well, the world is, is more open now, even if it's only virtually, you know, you can talk to people. But so I went from Leith only to Cardiff, to the Welsh College. That's not very far. Yeah. But it seemed far to me because I'd been to Cardiff rarely at that point. And then when I got there, there were English people. There were, uh, Dougray was there. That's where I met Dougray, you see. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So suddenly I was meeting people and that is part of the experience of going to further education whatever it is is just opening your your world yeah and i'd been in london a year before i went to drama school i moved i just moved down with a mate of mine um and we were you know for my whole period in drama school i lived in squats i lived in about 14 15 different squats in deptford you say a squat you mean literally you're just squatting there not paying any rent yeah i mean it was it was wow. easy to do it was easy to do then now you know it's nigh on impossible now to break a squat but then it was it was it was relatively simple i mean it was of course illegal and 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 i, I guess looking back dangerous you know but um 
but it was a great life, you know, and it was it would be council properties, council flats. You'd take the steel door off in the middle of the night, oh, and um, and then as soon as you change the locks, put a notice on the door. Uh, they had to then switch the gas uh, and electricity on, <laughs> and then we you could be in it for weeks to months, you know. Um, but we, it was a constant case of move. You know, we moved around a lot with a, with a group of lads and, and girls from from Belfast, who I'd met at a cramps gig, yeah. and we lived together for four or five years, uh, moving in and out of different um, squat, uh, squats of varying, you know, um, degrees of comfort and discomfort. You know, I had this kind of elitist, um, wonderful life in college and then this extraordinary kind of um, vagabond existence you know when when I went home each night well you, you're making me feel very <laughs> middle class and cosseted because when I was at when I was at college in Cardiff my when I talk about oh how edgy it was it's just because there was no hot water on my floor in the kitchen which I thought was quite living out on the edge and the only heating in the room was a gas fire so in the cold winters, I'd have to, I'd be woken at about four or five in the morning by the cold, and I'd have to go and light the gas fire. But but yours is several steps. And this idea of ripping off a steel door. I mean, if if someone had said to me, Rob, there's a building down here, let's go in. I would have said, you out of your mind, ripping off a steel door. But but you've always had. There's a danger to you. And the first time I saw you on stage was under Milkwood. And the thing I took away from that was you had this air of danger about you. You, you I couldn't take my eyes off you, which is always nice as an actor. Uh, it's a handy thing to have. But, but there was this thing, there was this sense of real danger. The last time I saw you on stage was at the Old Vic. And now let's talk about this. This is several stories in one. I came, yeah. came to see you as, as Ebenezer Scrooge in uh, Matthew Waters's wonderful production of Christmas Carol. The night I came to see it was, was a special night. Would you share with the observer why it was special? You know, it was one of those great nights. It was fucking brilliant, wasn't it? And what, what it was, I'll start with when I was on stage. I was on stage and there was a moment in the second half where I, where I increasingly through the show, I get more involved with the audience, don't mm -hmm, I? I kind mm -hmm. of, engage with the audience a lot more. Anyway, I knew you were in, didn't I? Yeah. You, you, yeah. Yeah, you said, can I have two tickets, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> so I knew you were in. So as I'm, you know, scanning the crowd, I see you and then <laughs> who do I see sitting next to you? Sir Tom Jones, <laughs> right? And I'm, I mean, the rapidity of what, what, what happens in your head when you're on stage and stuff like that is happening. The human brain is incredible. You know, this is why we're able to go to space, you know. Um, so there he is. There he is. And I'm going, you know, so I'm going, I'll, I'll deal with this later. I'll deal with this later, you know. And then there's a big sing song, isn't there? Yes. Towards yeah. the end. Yeah. Um, a big carol. And he joined in. Yeah. I just heard, I heard. I just heard it. I heard the voice, you know, not at full throttle, obviously, because he didn't want everyone to know Tom Jones is in, you know. <laughs> so I'm just blown away. And of course, every opportunity I'm getting in the wings, I'm grabbing people, tearing their wigs off, pushing tables out of the way, blowing out lanterns, going, Tom Jones is in, Tom Jones is in. <laughs> And the rest of the cast are going, but it's as if it's as if you know the the ghost, the, one of the <laughs> the ghost of Christmas present is in the house, you know. Yeah, yeah. And um, it was just brilliant. And then, of course, my I, the best thing then is that I had my uncle A. Riggin, who's a huge Tom Jones fan, and my auntie Jill from Wales. And um, and then they were in the dressing room after the show, and you came around with Tom, uh, and. Um, it, it, it was just, you know, it, it was just, it was one of those shows anyway that was that was kind of overspilling with with warmth and good feelings, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, it was. And, it was a beautiful have, production. Yeah. 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 And to, you know, to, Tom to have Tom and you there, you, you know, it, it was it was a, you know, it was metaphorically. I was going, guys, it's snowing. <laughs> 
<laughs> look, every, look, everyone, it's snowing inside, you know. <laughs> God, God bless us God one bless and all. Us. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Merry Christmas, everybody. Yeah, yeah. It was just, it was just bloody perfect. Reese, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave you with God you. Really you, lovely God. to see you. I'll see All you the soon, best. Karyat. See you soon. Dear see you. Bye bye.